Welcome back to I'm Still Here. I'm Larry. And I'm Heather. In 1998, at the age of 26, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. It changed everything for us, but I'm still here. Welcome back, and we are continuing with our 5 to Thrive series. Yes. Um, which is the end of our first segment today. Yeah. Okay. So what yeah. is the 5 to Thrive? 5 to th- Thrive is the kind of the five different aspects of that I really focused on mm-hmm. throughout the different phases of my cancer. So right now we're talking about from diagnosis until that treatment time is really established. Um, and we've talked about mental, uh, physical, nutrition, medical. And today we're going to talk about support. So family, friends, strangers. Any kind of support. Any kind of support um, just to help, you know, get the ball rolling and, and get things going. Um so Through this is a really the, stressful time. Yeah, this is the end of our kind of first segment of three segments. Yeah. And uh, we will also be then going on next week talking about each of those categories with during treatment. Mm-hmm. And then we'll do each of those categories post-treatment and hopefully give you guys something um, both in a podcast form but also in a download available where people can really uh, try to put these things into practice because it certainly worked with Heather and uh, these are the things that people have been asking for. So yeah, for here they time. are. Yeah. So starting out today with support. Yeah. So support when you're going through any kind of crisis is so important, mm-hmm. right? It just uh, makes everything a lot better. But the problem that happens, I feel like, with cancer is that a lot, it's finding the right support. So a lot of people will say, one, that they're going to help. Two, they'll say the wrong things completely. Like, there's a lot of kind of caveats, I feel like, that yeah. can kind of make um, you feeling like you have the right people around you um, mm-hmm. really a lot better. Um, and that I, the reason I feel that support is so imperative, especially in the beginning, is that as somebody who has cancer, I can't stress it enough that you need to take care of yourself, right? So you need the other things in life. You need help with them, right? Especially as women. Well, that's the thing. You need to take care of yourself. And in order to do that, yes, you're you gonna, need help. You need help. And you also need the people around you not to be asking for things from you. Or helping you in a way you don't want help with. Or helping yes. you in a way that's steering you down a road you don't yes. want with. Or yes. he- there's a million of these things that we could go through with. It's, it's what you need, one, yep. and want, two. But yeah. those, both of those things are very important in you thriving yep. and uh, moving on to the next step. Because remember, we haven't even got to treatment yet when yep. we're talking about this. It's just you, get, you were diagnosed yesterday. Yeah. Um, and treatment starts sometime in the future, hopefully near. Yeah, so what we realized quickly was how overwhelming it was, right? Just from, just on a very basic level, just to disseminate the news. Yeah. Just to get the news out there and to have people come, the reactions come back in was terrible both ways. I felt like it, yeah. it, it was so painful. Long time ago. <laughs> For us. Yeah. Uh, this was before internet, uh, before cell phones, before that. So I get it times different now. Yep. Um, but yeah. But there's also just such a, you know, there's such a drain on doing that. It's so hard. It's so hard as a patient to have to talk to a million people about the fact that you have cancer when you are terrified that you have cancer, right? And, and it's just... Yeah. All of those things. What we kind of realized quickly was like, I needed kind of a team of people around me. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, you know, you also can only, you just can only handle so much. By the way, back then, we didn't sit down and go, this is what we need. We didn't write out a list of this is what Heather needs on her team. No, no. But... There were some things that that you vocalized yeah. or said, I don't want to do this. I can't yeah. do this. I yeah. don't want to do this. And people just jumped in and did that. 
kind of the right person. Most for the most part, he was in the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, said, "Well, I I would be good at that. I can do." I that. think it just the the needs as the needs arose, it became yeah. very obvious who could or who would do some of those things. Yeah. And some of the initial things were like one of them was research, researching medical things. Right. My mom is a former computer programmer. Her brain is. Just amazing, and she's really good at that kind of thing. And I and I made the mistake. I, I said it was before the internet. The internet was around. We just didn't have a computer. <laughs> Not everybody had computers, you know. And well, it so was, it was the there, beginning. and she it's did have one. And she did some of it on that. Yeah. So my mom took on that role. So, so why, why have a research person? Because you do want to be able to, kind of as we alluded to in our last episode, you do want to be able to walk into an appointment and say, hey, what about this? Or... You know, I think you do want to be able to participate in conversations or know what's out there in terms of treatment. Mm -hmm. I had a very limited, I did not want to know much at all because you have to slog through a lot of crappy things, which I knew my brain could not handle hearing about things that didn't work or people that died. Uh, So I... You know, and my mom was actually given that advice by someone else as well. It just was very obvious to me. And that was one thing that I knew right from the get-go was that I could only take in so much information, bad bad information, and I'd already gotten my fill in the first week and a half. Yeah. Right? Right. So so that was that was it. That's why we were doing that. So in this again, uh it's it's a million times worse now. Because yes. all you got to do is pick up your phone, which yes. doesn't exist now, and type in a few words, and yes. you're getting page after page after page, and from so many different sources. Some, some of them are just bullshit. Yeah. Some of them are very reputable, and you know what? That's not the best thing to read right then. Yeah. Uh, for most people, because we have, remember, in these five to thrive, mental is the first one. Mm-hmm. And we want that mental energy and that mental process to be about killing cancer and and to be about surviving um not about here are the 750,000 things that could be bad about it yeah. they have to list those things and every medicine yeah. you take you don't have to read that there are definitely yeah. but somebody else should read that yeah and even i mean even example. the medicines that they advertise on tv like mute them <laughs> Like, you don't have to listen to that. I made a point of not knowing what the side effects of my drugs were because I didn't want them to manifest. And and so let's talk about how you handled this because in the very, very beginning, you you didn't do that Um, and realized early on, like maybe the second day or whatever, you realized, oh, I could just say, don't tell me that. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to tell me that. Yeah, no. So the, I think I really, between the first appointment and yeah. the time I got to Dr. Mariver, when it wasn't even her yet, it was the nurse coming in, had seen my my uh, bone scan and was started to list all of where my bone months were. Mm-hmm. And I was like, stop. Like, I can't know that. I, mm-hmm. You know, and she got through a few of them. Yeah. And I was like, please stop. And then she, and she did. And then I just learned to like, I would... Like before, and just as they're coming in and saying hello, I'd be like, I don't want results. Yep. I do right. not want, I don't want like explicit results. I want good, not good. <laughs> and, and the reason for that, again, is the mental side of this. Yes. And it's so important. And if you allow that into your head, you can't reverse it. Yeah. It's irreversible. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I wish there was a way, and maybe you can go to some therapist and they can get it out of there. But... You got to be a, a, a big, or not only only just you. We'll talk about that. But people around you can be a very big protector yes. of that. Yeah. For the patient. Yeah. So a research person, you know, to Absolutely. do anything that yeah. you need researched. I like. There's people in your life that are really freaking good at that. Yeah. Let them do it. Yeah. And just tell them this is the type of information I want back, and I do not ever want anything like this, this, and this back. Yeah. And I, I guess I should say, I had three main people that were with me, all one of you almost all of the time. Mm-hmm. It was my mom, who did more than research. She yeah. helped us with a million things. She would be, she did a million things mm-hmm. for us. Um, but, and you, mm-hmm. 
and then my best friend Christy. And I don't know necessarily how I would describe um, your roles because you guys both, you all wore multiple hats, right? So we'll just Which talk I think about this is the norm. The We're going to list right. a whole bunch of things here. Yeah. It's not like a different person does all these. Yeah. And then yeah. I think there's also just kind of tears of that. My dad was around. Your mm -hmm. parents were around. Mm -hmm. There were brother, people. My brother. brother was, you know, helpful and... But it was all just kind of different levels of things. Some things were very specific. Um, we had people, uh, a p couple of people in our church that handled things and did, were were had a role. Yeah. Of, so when we I talk do. about the dissemination of news, which is so challenging in the beginning, that's where we put people in place very quickly yep. and said, if you need to, if you want to ask a question, if you want to inquire how I'm doing, things like that talk to this person and that wasn't even you that was my brother that was my colleague from work that was people at our church talk to them and we will we'll get, update them we'll update them mm -hmm. but we get, it's too overwhelming and people say stupid shit and we've talked about that before yeah. and i learned it quickly and was like i can't not with bad intention not with they, bad they, intention they get, but they, they want to tell you a story but, though yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's in there i'd be careful yeah so um so you need a research person. I found it really helpful to have somebody to try things with. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I like was... What? Oh, my gosh. Like, immediately, we're kind of like, oh, so, like, vegetarian mm -hmm. or vegan? Like, what does that mean? And my friend Christy was like, let's go to the grocery store. And we would, like, yeah. you know what I mean? The, and, again, great distraction. Because there are times in this initial period where... You have nothing going on in your brain is just flying, mm -hmm. right? So some distraction elements that way. Um, or somebody to work out with. Somebody to, you know, you name it. I, We went wig shop. My mom and I went wig shopping, which turned out that's, horrendously. That's not now. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty early. But anyway, all of that stuff. Somebody to try things with mm -hmm. or to just be, just to kind of, encompass that same thought process be on the same page they got to be on the same page yes. with the positive yep and yeah and uh, um let's not freaking talk about cancer and yep. they got to be good with that or yep. no i want to talk about I this need to talk about on this. a deep level in yeah. my, on my future or what that could be yeah. i want to talk about the scary parts of it yeah and that person can, that might be a different person but you know yeah i agree yeah processing uh some of those feelings. I don't know how early you want to do a therapist, but I we've talked a bit yeah. about that. I would do it immediately. Immediately now, yeah. Um, other people, drivers. So you, you in, just got news and you're diagnosed and you know in two weeks you're going to have to go to some medical facility five days a week at 10 a.m., <laughs> For some sort of treatment, yeah. which we'll get into in a few weeks. Um, in a lot of those days, you're not going to be able to drive. Yeah. Drivers are huge. Drivers are huge. Um, people that hang out, I call them hanger outers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just again, you it, there's there is uh, there are certain people that you just feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and there were some people, of course, it was the three of you, but also there were some people that weren't, I wasn't especially close with, but just the way they talked to me and the way I, I knew that, oh, I could spend an afternoon with them or whatever. And trust sometimes, them. And trust yeah. them. And, and, and that was really helpful. And sometimes it, it's, it, God, you guys know it's different people. It's different people in your life right now. Sure. Sometimes I want to laugh. Sometimes I want to cry. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to be in the same room as somebody and not talk Yeah. or, or yeah. whatever your personality is and what, uh, yeah. you need at that time those are the people like start thinking about that now yeah and make a list and talk to them and say hey you know what you said you would help me um i'm gonna be calling on you yeah. and you know what it might mean for them they might they might have to take a day off for you and i bet a lot of your friends are willing yeah. to do that or even just a family yeah will you check in on me or mm -hmm. will you whatever so uh, the next one we talked about was or wrote down was bodyguards, which are the people who yeah. say no. And I'm going to let you talk about that. Yeah. So um, I realized, early, well, I saw early on, um, and I can remember example, in, you know, it was like kind of in our church. I know it was, and it was an old lady, and 
before I even know what was going on or we had any experience with this, she was telling this story to Heather about her whatever who had cancer and it ended up the story that she died. And I was just like, oh, shit. Um, I realized then, well, I can just step in. I, I can be rude. Not if I have to be. And I would do that to protect her. Um, or I can be forward, you know, in, in a very forward way. And I don't care if it comes back on me. I would do that to protect her. And I would just be that. Or a phone call comes in. We had a phone in our house, old school. Um, phone call comes in and I would be the one to go, mm, now's not a great time. Or, you know what? Yeah, that's perfect. She would love to talk to you right now. I would be that. Or... In those uncomfortable situations where it's, or even in the hospital setting, and I know we're not there yet, but but in diagnosing, in, in setting up, or if it's with these, uh, um, with the scans tests. and tests yeah. and stuff, I, I can be the one to go, no, not right now. No, mm-hmm. I'm just, and I'll be the rude one or the forward one because that takes energy from the patient, and that takes, and that's not where you need, and I know it's a negative mental part, and, and not that everything's positive, but I don't have a better word for it. It's just staying on that track of healing and killing cancer. That's where the patient needs to be mentally. And I did everything I can by being that bodyguard, that no person, that buffer Mm -hmm. to allow her to be oblivious to some of the shit that was going on. Or, you know what? The the kitchen sink is leaking and stuff or whatever. I'm going to do all of that so she can be kind of have a one track mind. Yeah, kind of, we've talked about it as like building the bubble before. So just really referring to that. Uh, Positive people, generally, you need them. You're, you know, I mean, it might be a favorite nurse. It might be a tech that, you know, you like. I have a, I have favorites everywhere. You do? I, you know, so. And if you broke down the traits of that, it would make sense why they're your favorites. Yeah, so, um. I, people who maybe provide meals, but again, that's within like your what you're looking for. So I feel like you kind of have people who are like being helpful to help themselves, and you have people who are being helpful to help you. Yeah. And this is where I'd come in again if somebody um, she told us whatever Betty Jane said <laughs> she wanted to make a meal for us, or if I knew the church or mm-hmm. someone was planning these things to make meals. I would go to them and go, listen, here's what it has to be. It's okay not to make one, but if you're going to make one, here's the rules. And don't send anything to my house that don't follow these rules. And they might go, man, that Larry's a dick. I don't care. (laughs) I don't care. Um, That's what it has to be because something comes in that just smells awesome and she's not eating that. Well, that's not good. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, another big one was babysitters. So I had some, I mean, besides our family, which was amazing, I had a couple of women who were just like, yes, yes, every day. (laughs) And that was such a huge help to me. I mean, um, I, I don't think stuff like this gets talked about very often because we generally talk about cancer when people don't need babysitters anymore, you know, but, but man, what a huge and what a huge uh, coordination of it, too. So to really have some people that you knew, you could just call and they'd be like, yep, you know, I don't feel good or I got to do this or whatever. And, and it can be, you know, a lot. There are a lot of women who are diagnosed with stage four that have high school age kids, you know, um, people in their late 40s and 50s being diagnosed and they have high school kids. Well, you know what? It's not a babysitter you need, but... Um, that friend that will go to that game and watch yes, them when you absolutely. are sick and they know that yes. you're there clapping for them and after yes. the game you come up to them, that's the yes. babysitter too. Yes. You know, so it's it's that mindset of you need somebody to take your place yeah, that in parenting. Yes, I agree with that. That's a great point. These, yeah. You know, our experience, our Sydney was very young, but... Mm-hmm. Oh, there's so many things. Yes, in order to be there for for kids. Yeah, and I, yeah. you know, I've been a coach my whole life, and and kids want someone in the stands. They do. That is, it's it's very important. And yeah. To know mom's at home, not feeling good, and in yeah. bed maybe, and because she's sick. Oh, that that's horrible. You know, and that's we enough. all know that. Yeah. To have somebody there though. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. 
need people to just help hold down the fort. And mm-hmm. I think some of that, I thought about work also. Like, I mean, a lot of people work through all of this, mm-hmm. um, you you know, so... And you Hopefully have to. you have somebody that can help you kind of get through some of that or that you can send a text to to say, yeah. you know. It's one thing to make it eight hours through work, but yeah. then to come have to come home and clean the house and do And all. that too. And if that somebody stuff. can just hold down the floor, all the things that that means. Yeah. If you have uh, that those people, because it's probably those people, not person. Somebody who can get some groceries for oh, you gosh. so you don't have to. Everything. Somebody who can do all that stuff is... Just huge. Because I get they can't go to work for you, right? But there's a lot of things. Yeah, no. Again, home. this is always about prior prioritizing the things that you absolutely have to do, right? Yeah. Like you need to mentally keep yourself there. You need to go to work. You need, you know, and then mm-hmm. what do you have left over, and and so that's always the question. Yeah. And then one thing, the next thing that I was thinking about was um, financial assistance, and and by that I mean. You know, somebody to help you pl- apply for disability or to help you know what your disability policies look like if you have them. Somebody to help you um, kind of figure out a budget. I I know that breast cancer bankrupts people. I know it. Every day. And, you know, any kind of way that you can, you know, start to look at some of that, ask for help. Financial assistance. Um, I think it's similar to that research person that will make some tough phone yeah, calls. Yeah, but it for might you. be. But it, yeah, I think it's a different, maybe a different kind of person. Okay. You know, I mean, so any, but yes, people who are who know that kind of stuff, who can mm-hmm. help, and and you can who can ask at the hospital, who can ask other people too. Like, how do we, how do we get through this? And I obviously, you know, if we're talking about this, that you know. You can't shelter yourself from everything, but boy, if there's ways that that somebody can help you and you don't have to know the nitty gritty of how shitty it is, <laughs> you know, financially, yeah, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, you can find that out in a year. <laughs> yeah, and then social media. So mm. just a coordinator for that. Again, always, 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 you're protecting yourself. So think about whether or not what you're getting from that you don't we're kind of our brains are kind of trained to oh i have to respond i have to do this i have to no you don't and therefore if if that draw is too much you know just don't be on it if it helps to put information out have somebody else do it all of those kind of things you have there's not one correct way to do it and honestly this ebbs and flows i feel i feel like um but i just when you're in this pre-treatment phase or this treatment phase, yeah, I I can't name one good thing social media is going to bring you. Yeah, I would I would agree. Post treatment, yeah, okay, I, I I can see how they're you know yeah. you getting into groups and talking about things and stuff, but boy, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad there. And there's a lot of factual things that are just there that you don't need in your brain right then. Yeah. Well, not just that. Again, even just people responding to you, you know, the people that that found out that you have cancer. Like the way, the things yeah. they say are, I can tell you, I, I mean, how many times people said something to me that I was like, you think I'm going to die? <laughs> you know, and I just, so not having to deal with For that sure. stuff is a big deal. But then, okay, so let's let's move. Those are there's a million jobs, mm-hmm. and there, some of them are going to be specific to you. Write them down, think about them. And when, when we when we have the download, we uh, that that's on the download listing of these actual jobs and, and descriptions yep, and your of people. Them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then some other like physical things or you know useful tools I would say mm-hmm. for support. One would be a journal, and by a journal I mean like. It's um, back to school time and, and spiral notebooks are like a quarter. <laughs> That's a journal. <laughs> that yep. works fine. Okay. I mean, you can type you can type on your computer too. I feel like physically writing things does help you kind of dump things out of your brain a little better. But get a journal and not for somebody else to read for you. I don't tear it up every day, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Um, or put some stuff in it that's inspirational, that's helpful. You know, but get a calendar, <laughs> a calendar that is shared maybe or however that works to help you, you know, uh, 
not have to remember as many things, but also just helps even, everybody. You might be on not the even same have page. to ask for a driver. Yeah. If you're if you have yeah. this shared calendar with ten people yeah. and they see on there that and somebody signs up on your calendar. Yeah. And, I mean there's so many good ways where you don't even have to ask. Yeah. 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 Um, podcasts, find some good podcasts, some that will make you laugh, some that will distract you, yeah. you know, some that will teach you whatever you want to do, find some good podcasts, uh, books, you know, again, just Same. distraction factor. Sometimes even reading is too much. And especially at that beginning, you know, maybe it's a puzzle book, a uh, Sudoku, uh, something like that, or, you know, a mind waiting or, between tests in oh, the gosh, hospital yeah. and it's uncomfortable. And yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and then just, you know, movies and TV shows and things like that. And again, I just feel like whatever makes you happy at that point, whatever allows you to not be thinking of cancer 100 percent of the time. Um, I know you're a big fan of Married at First Sight. But <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I like that kind of stuff, and so that's, you know, if that's what I want to watch, that's what I'm going to watch during that time. So, For sure. And uh, you're, the people around you Especially at this gonna, point when oh, your so brain is hard. just going a million miles an hour, and it's crazy, and everything you see and everything reminds you so, of that. Yes. A mind-numbing movie or TV show or one of those kind of things is awesome. Yeah. You can check out or something for an hour where you, or two. Yeah, something where you're fairly sure that cancer's not going to come up. Right. Is like and it such, might. It, God, it's it, Sometimes it is, but but it's, it is kind of nice. I mean, you know, for it to, yeah. I don't know, to have that reprieve. Mm -hmm. so, so I hope that's helpful in terms of, you know, getting some support around you and mm -hmm. getting yourself set. And... Uh, yeah, we'll have some downloads available here soon. Yep. And next week, we're going to go back to mental, but we're going to talk about it from a treatment standpoint. So, yep. Um, as always, we would love any comments or suggestions or whatever. Or, or please share this. You know, yes, you have that. Absolutely. That's what these are for. Um, and now that we have the all five of the first phase, you know, you have somebody who was just diagnosed with cancer. Please uh, let them know about this. Uh, we're doing this, so we we wished we had this yeah. when, during diagnosis, and we could just listen to this and go, "Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't think of that." And and hopefully the treatment part of this will even you know be more helpful. And and people don't have to learn the hard way to some extent that that we did. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Have a good week. Peace.